What's up guys, Sleeps here with another episode of my journey to an ultimate team and we're going to start this episode off with an epic trade in this episode guys. We managed to get JJ Okocha for 420,000 coins on a bin and at the time his next cheapest buy now was actually 494,000 coins. So we're going to list for 490k and if he sells for that amount we would be looking at about 45,000 coin profit. So that is our best trade so far in the series. Um, hopefully as we build more and more coins we can make profit of over 100k on one trade I think that would be a very very epic moment so you see here we're making a couple of signings uh, I decided to go with Hamshik and for our Premier League team we're going to go with Jamie Vardy and also Lalana. now you might be wondering why I did not sign a striker for the Serie A team and the simple reason for that is because I was going to switch to the 41212 narrow but I didn't like any of the cams like if it's if it's not Dybala, it wasn't good enough for me. Like I didn't like any of them. If I were to switch that formation and put like just some random cam there, I would have felt like I was almost downgrading. I considered putting Hamshik there, but I don't know. I just like him more as a CM, and he he's looked like he's going to fit into the team nicely. He's he's tall. He's got five star weak foot this year. Like that is amazing. He's 87 overall, so our highest rated player in the team. And then I, I decided, okay, we'll make the Premier League team 4-1-2-1-2 narrow. And I have Renato Sanchez on the right hand side CM. Left hand side we put Lalana, which we purchased, and up there obviously partners with Welbeck is going to be Jamie Vardy, which we also bought on the market. So we're going to move on to this first match. I'm hoping to get a good start. Preferably, I always like to get a debut goal with your new player. You know, who doesn't like getting a debut goal with the new signing? So I'm not going to lie. In this game, I was feeding Hamshik the ball quite a lot, trying to get him on the score sheet. However, Perisic is the one that's going to make the breakthrough. He's clean through. And if there's one thing that I would have definitely missed switching away from the 4-3-2-1 is using Perisic because he started off slow. But since then, he's definitely made up for all that for that slow start. He scores all the time. That five-star weak foot is just... I love players with five-star weak foot. Like, there's nothing greater in this game than using a, a player with five-star weak foot. They just feel so dangerous from all angles. It's just a lot of fun. That was probably the best chance that we had with Hamshik right there. It was that uh, distance from effort shooting at the near post. Keeper came up with a good save. And we were not able to get Hamshik involved, unfortunately. We do win that one 2-0. And that was also the Division 6 title, which is all nice in that. But we didn't manage to get Hamshik uh, an assist or a goal. So that's okay. We don't have to force the issue. I'm sure he'll play better in the long run. And we're now going to try our Jamie Vardy, Lalana, and Renato Sanchez and see how they get on against this primarily French team. Apart from the right back, he does have some meadow there at right back. And this game did not start off very well. So have a look at this clip that I've edited for you guys. Look at this ball going through Smalling's legs. Like, when things like that happen in FIFA, they just tilt me so much because I have no control over whether Smalling opens his legs or not. All I can do is read the pass and try to intercept it. For some reason, Smalling decides to open his legs. It goes right through. I can do nothing. And then he's in on goal. And it's just that moment in particular ruined this entire game for me because it was just playing on my mind the entire match and it showed in my gameplay. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but so far in these clips, I'm basically just like going nuts. I'm just diving in at the ball because it's it's still in my mind. I'm like, if that game doesn't go down 1-0 to something that I have no control of, this game could be completely different. And then he just proceeded to obviously take advantage of my reckless pressure, makes it 3-0. He should probably definitely be scoring this cutback. You know, he pretty much had done my own my whole team and a Ben Yedder shoots, but we come up with a good save. But I was just so frustrated, but there is there is a bit of good news in this one, and that is is that we do get a debut goal with Jamie Vardy just about. I think his center back actually won that off of me, but Jamie Vardy was able to put away the deflection. So Jamie Vardy gets himself a debut goal. We played poorly in that one, to be honest. It's, I shouldn't let that one moment in the game get to me. The guy was pretty good, too. You saw he there. He had 58% possession, so not only was I pressuring like a madman, but he seemed to be more of like a possession-type player, so it was just two things not mixing, and we're going to have to hold that L, so it's fine. We lose, and our next opponent has uh, Icon Vieira, and like I do not expect to come up against teams like this in Division 5. We're in Division 5, and we're coming up against Icons. Like, what is going on? And there's Vieira putting it in the top left-hand corner in the 8th minute. So not a very good start to this one. We do try to fade away back into this one. However, a mobilist shot gets deflected out wide. Abate from a tight angle. De Gea comes up with a clutch save. And now again, and Vieira, he plays a little 1-2. And this is a very, very similar position to which he scored the first goal. 
Fortunately for us, Handanovic that time does come up with a save to keep us alive in this one. And this is a good opportunity here for Perisic and De Gea on the rebound. Like, that first one was, was blocked fair enough, but oftentimes when you see that blocked shot, I feel like it kind of throws off the keeper's positioning, and then the rebound goes in. So we're still uh, alive in this one. It's 1-0. I gave away the ball cheaply. I do. I, I performed a pretty nice slide tackle. Somehow, Gamero managed to skip away from that challenge, and then he makes it 2-0. And then at this point, it's the 63rd minute. I'm kind of going nuts for it. We almost get the ball off him there. It was just it's just things didn't seem to be going my way. Just just a little bit off here and there. I should have been winning that, winning that ball off Gamero in that last clip. I should have probably won that slide tackle, but it was just rough. You see, I didn't actually play that poorly. I had 62% possession, 11 shots, 9 on target. I don't think I played particularly bad in that game. It just We just didn't capitalize on our opportunities, I suppose. So two losses in a row, guys. And I don't know what's going on. Like, Are all the pros playing in Division 5? I expected basically to get to Division 3 very, very easily with very few losses. But Division 5 is proving to be pretty difficult. And fortunately for us, we finally take the lead in the opening five minutes of a game. There's Welbeck making it 1-0. So for once, we, we're up early. And all these games, I think I've had to fight back. But Sterling is on the break, and Sterling is going to finish at the near post somehow. I don't know. I, it is a bit frustrating when you concede at the near post. I think Keeper should be saving that 9 times out of 10, especially with Sterling's finishing. I don't think it's all that great. Welbeck right here has a good opportunity, but it falls to Vardy, and Vardy smashes that one in. And you can really feel Vardy's shot power. Like I think he has upwards of 85 shot power, and you can definitely feel it on efforts like that. It seems like the ball just flies in at a ridiculous amount of speed. Welbeck does make it 3-1. We can still rely on trusty Welbeck. He's so good. He's been great ever since we bought him and put him in the club. And this guy does give away a penalty. I mean, that's so obvious that that was a PK. We're going to step up with Welbeck. We go right. The keeper's pointing to the to his left, which is my right. And he comes up with a save. We're on the ball here. Again, we're going to feed this over to Vardy. Vardy's going to bring that back very coolly, very casually. And with a nice finish, makes it 4-1. So, okay. Things are looking a lot better after we had to take some pretty disappointing losses earlier in this episode. And we are going to create another chance here with Vardy and shoot from distance. And that's a great example of his shot power. And his long shots actually aren't that great, but I think it kind of balances out when you have very good shot power. I think naturally your long shots are just a little bit better regardless of what your shot or of what your long shot stat actually is. We earned another penalty and can you believe he actually saved another one this time we went to or this time we again went to the right and he still saved it and we get yet another penalty. Going to step up with Welbeck. Come on Welbeck, you've missed two. Are you going to miss three? He does. He hits the crossbar and Vardy was probably like, "All right, enough of this. We're going to score from the spot on one of these one way or another." So Vardy actually picks up a fourth goal in that one making it 6-1 but oh my god I had three penalties I definitely should be putting those all three of them away you know that you, you can't be missing penalties if that's weekend league those could be losses every single time I missed a penalty anyway on to some positive news on to some more positive news we finally get a win in this episode and we also managed to sell our Okocha for 490k putting us at a pretty good position before signing these players I think we had in the low 700s and now I think we're about at 660 some odd k so We've already semi-recovered from the signings that we've made, and hopefully I can keep my coin balance fairly high because I want to make more, I want to do more trading with icons. Like, this is kind of like the moment I've been waiting for. I think there's a lot of profit to be made with icons. I think that's where you're really going to see the big amount of coins coming in. So I'm going to keep my eye on the, on the market in the icon section, see if I can pull off some more trades like that, because if we keep making like 50, 50K trades, we're going to have millions of coins in no time. So I'm going to keep working on that. And in this game, Griezmann absolutely destroyed me. I'll just tell you guys right now. It seemed like Griezmann could do no harm. It was like every opportunity led to a goal this time on his right foot. Kind of a strange finish. Finish. Uh, he like finessed it into the left-hand corner on his weaker side. A cross body. Weird finish. He made it 2-1. Uh, we fought back well though, you know, I felt like I was constantly creating chances. This was actually from kickoff and as much as I complain about kickoff goals, it worked for us in that occasion. We do manage to draw level to all. We're going to cut this one back to Joao Mario and that is a shocking, shocking miss. And I know Joao Mario doesn't have the greatest finishing, but he's not exactly the worst at taking his chances either. Anyhow, he does manage to make it 3-2. He cuts that back to Griezmann who's just chilling on the edge of that 6-yard box. 
and there's no way he's going to miss an opportunity like that. And I find myself consistently scoring from these short free kicks. It seems like whenever I pass it, they try to rush me down. I just do a ball roll, and I create chances. Right there, the initial shot doesn't go in, but Benatia does draw us level. And then in the 90th minute, it falls to Griezmann. And like I said, Griezmann was just on fire in this game. It's like everything that fell to his feet ended up being a goal. So we lose that one 4-3 in the 90th minute. Very frustrating. I have to say... My play in this episode was just terrible, just from, from start to finish. I don't know if it's because I had just finished playing Weekend League and then started recording this episode. Maybe I was a little burnt out. I think especially that Smalling Meg, that I think that just set the tone for the rest of the episode. After that Smalling Meg, I don't think I was the same person. But that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you're all enjoying the series. Please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.